Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Be firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. Call the meeting to order. It's a regular town board meeting. It's September 10th, uh, 2018. Time is 7.03 p.m. Uh, before we begin the regular agenda, would you all please rise and join Councilwoman Catherine Atherton in saying the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible. Okay, the first item on the agenda, we'll need to go into the Queensbury Board of Health uh, because there are two uh, requests for variances on sewage disposal, and we'll get to the details on those uh, when and if we go into the Board of Health. So, is there a motion for the Queensbury Town Board to move into the Queensbury Board of Health? So moved. Moved by uh, Councilman Farrell. Seconded. Seconded by Councilwoman Atherden. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's uh, unanimous. We're now in the Queensbury Board of Health. So, our first resolution before us, please, Rose. This is the resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of Jane Dugan and Scott Newman. Okay. This is setting a public hearing for Monday, September 24th, 7 p.m., right here in this room. And uh, Jane and Scott Dubin of 11 Sunset Drive uh, wish a variance. It's only one, two feet from the property line in lieu of the 10 foot required setback. They are putting in uh, an advanced system, a Claris Fusion 450. And other details of that will be covered at the public hearing on Monday, September 24th, if this board sets this resolution to do so. Any questions on this? A resolution to set the public hearing then? I'll introduce. Introduced by Councilman Metabier. Second. Seconded by Councilman Perron. Roll call vote on this, please, Rose. Councilperson Atherton. Yes. Baronk? Yes. Switzer? Yes. Stroud? Yes. Medigan? Yes. Okay. Next and last. It's a resolution setting a public hearing on sewage disposal variance application of 20 Bean Road LLC residents. All right. This is, um, again, uh, um, only requested one variance, four feet from the property line in, in lieu of the 10 foot required setback for their absorption field on 20 Bean Road. And again, this is a Claris Fusion 800 because it's a five bedroom residence. And we're setting a public hearing on this on September 24th, and there'll be more details at that time. Any questions on this from board? No. All right, anybody want to move this forward? Introduced by Councilman Metabier. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Atherden. Roll call vote on 1.2, please. Councilperson Perron? Yes. Switzer? Yes. Stroud? Yes. Medivir? Yes. And Atherton? Yes. All right, it passes. Both public hearings were set for September 24th, and that are, those are the only items that we have for the Queensbury Board of Health tonight. So is there a resolution to move out of the Queensbury Board of Health? So moved. 
Moved by uh, Councilman Farron. Second. Seconded uh, by Councilwoman Switzer. All those in favor say aye. 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 It's unanimous. We're now out of the Board of Health. Uh, next item on the agenda, there are 17 resolutions. I say 17. Those of you that have the agenda may be saying 18. We're going to pull 3.9 from consideration tonight at this time. So we have 17 other resolutions. And what I'll do is I'll briefly describe each resolution. And then I will give the, uh, the public an opportunity to speak to the 17, any of the 17 resolutions that are before us tonight. Now, if you have another matter that's not related to any of the resolutions, I will give the public an opportunity to speak to that at the end of the meeting. This portion of the meeting is for the resolutions that are before us tonight. Okay? So, um, Resolution 3.1. It's a resolution setting a public hearing on Queensbury Consolidated Sanitary Sewer District Benefit Tax Rule for 2018. All right, Queensbury Consolidated, this is setting units and tax rolls. Uh, generally speaking, uh, 2018 rate was uh, 383 a unit. This is for, for 2019 rate of $4.82 a unit. Um, this is a public hearing that will be scheduled for September 24th at 7 p.m. right here in this building. Resolution 3.2. Resolution setting public hearing and Reservoir Park Sanitary Sewer District Benefit Tax Roll for 2018. All right, Reservoir Park. Uh, what Superintendent Chris Harrington gave me today, the 2018 rate was $437.80 per unit. This rate is the same for 2019. So the units and rates, we'll have a public hearing on this, September 24th at 7 p.m. Resolution 3.3. It's a resolution setting a public hearing on Route 9 Sanitary Sewer District Benefit Tax Roll for 2018. All right, this is setting a public hearing for September 24th, 7 p.m. right here in this building for the uh, Route 9 sewer. And the Route 9 2018 rate was $30.46 a unit, and the proposed rate for 2019 is $39.72 a unit. Resolution 3-4. Resolution setting public hearing at South Queensbury, Queensbury Avenue, Sanitary Sewer District, benefit tax roll for 2018. All right, this is setting units and rate. A public hearing on this will be September 24th at 7 p.m. This is the South Queensbury, Queensbury Avenue. The 2018 rate was $30.46 a unit, and the proposed 2019 rate is $26.39 a unit. Resolution 3.5. Resolution setting public hearing on West Queensbury Consolidated Sewer District Benefit Tax Rule for 2018. Okay, this too will be set for September 24th at 7 p.m. right here. This is for West Queensbury, and the 2018 rate was $145.35 per unit, and the proposed 2019 rate is $57.17 a unit, and there'll be a public hearing on this on September 24th. 3.6. Resolution setting public hearing on Glen Lake Aquatic Plant Growth Control District Benefit Tax Roll for 2018. Okay, this is setting the public hearing for September 24th. And um, this is the rate for the Glen Lake Aquatic Plant Growth Control District, and it's the same as it was uh, last year. Proposing the same going into next year. 3.7. Resolution setting public hearing on Lake Sunnyside Aquatic Plant Growth Control District Benefit Tax Rule for 2018. All right, this is setting a public hearing for the September 24th, 7 p.m. right here for the Lake Sunnyside Aquatic Plant Growth Control District. Their uh, per unit price is going to be cut in half. It was 144.85 and it's being proposed around $72 a unit. 3.8. Resolution setting public hearing at North Queensbury Wastewater Disposal District, Dunham's Bay, benefit tax roll for 2018. Okay, 
And this is setting a public hearing for the North Queensbury Wastewater Disposal District for September 24th at the same rate as they had last year. 310. Resolution authorizing conservation agreement and, assign and assignment and assumption agreement between Open Space Institute Land Trust Inc. and Town Queensbury. Well, we've been doing a lot of work, good work, I'll add, with the Open Space Institute. And the Open Space Institute has asked us to uh, take over the conservation easement for the Faith Bible Church consisting of 69.22 uh, acres. And that means that we'll do a walk around on that property once a year, and if there's anything abnormal, then we have to bring it to their attention. So it's basically to save them from doing the yearly walkthroughs. They're trying to save themselves some work, and so we walk through it all the time anyway. So we said, sure, we can do it, instead of them coming up here and doing it. The other one is the conservation easement for Hudson Point Park. They'd like to transfer that to the Queensbury Land Conservancy, and the Land Conservancy has agreed to walk Hudson Point Park. And since the Land Conservancy owns Faith Bible Church, they asked the town to walk that. So you don't have the same entity checking itself. All good stuff. Resolution 311. It's a resolution authorizing issuance of shirts and coats as uniforms for town building and codes enforcement officers. All right, well, Dave came to me and wondered uh, that if we standardized the shirts and coats for his department and announced that they're Queensbury and that they're building and coats department and so forth, and uh, I said, well, sir, I'll put that resolution before the board. All right, resolution 312. Resolution authorizing advertisement of bids for sale of obsolete equipment. Okay, we have a 1989 international. Panasonic VHS, palm, re palm quarter, maybe museums would like some of these. <laughs> um, we have a few old Dell computers, and so they're going to go on gubdeals.com uh, to dispose of because they're considered to be surplus material from the town. Resolution 313. Resolution reaffirming resolutions regarding purchase of property from Freiburger Trust and acceptance of donations and grant funds related to Rush Pond Park expansion project. This is a wonderful thing. Uh, a little over a year ago, um, some folks, no, list those folks in a minute, came in and asked me and I shared it with the town board. If we'd be interested in working with them to purchase the private parcel, and I said, Yeah, we're interested. What do you have in mind? Well, we're going to try and raise as much money as we can, and we would like the town to work with us and commit to purchasing the free, three Freiburger parcels in Rush Pond. Well, that kind of works out because most of the parcels in the Rush Pond area are already owned by the town of Queensbury. And it's wonderful that you have a grassroots organization, a group of people coming and willing to raise their own money to help do a very wonderful thing. I'll show you why. Um, Now, Joel Barlow, the cameraman for TVA, is going to, I'm going to give him these maps and he's going to, for the public, viewing public, he's going to do a much better job. The three parcels in blue are the three Freiburger parcels. The red is the Rush Pond Trail. The area that's colored like a light green, is the CEA, Critical Environmental Area, the Rush Pond area. Now, we own most of these parcels that are identified in this area except the Great Escape parcel here and the three fiber parcels. We own them now. Uh, here's another map. And it shows in green 
all the parcels that are owned by the town of Queensbury and the striped ones are owned by the Freiburgers at the time were owned by the Freiburgers but now we can make those green too so we recre we've created a rush pond park I'm going to tell you there's an interesting story I just want you to get the visual here is basically an existing trail on the Freiburger property that connects with the Rush Pond Trail. And we're showing parking on West Mountain Road and additional parking for people that want to use that trail system. So these properties, which go all the way to the Northway from West Mountain Road all the way over to the Northway, 78 acres, are now going to be owned by the town thanks to the group of people that came to see me that day and thanks to this town board that supported this idea so i the person that kind of headed up all this is glenn bruni so um i asked glenn i said i don't want to forget anybody will you help me out with who i should thank so he sent this email and the best for me is to read it if you don't mind Hi, John. I would like to start by thanking you. We so much appreciate your vision and dedication to our town and know the project would never have happened without your support and encouragement and the support of the town board. Thank you. The original nine individuals, families, and Leland that resolved to work towards preserving the 78 acres and reached out to you last year in reverse alphabetical order, and I like that, Strau. <coughs> William Oslowski, Kim Scott, Jan, J Jeff and Deidre Hill, Jeff Jarrett, Bob and Ann Flynn, John and Joan Ferron, or Farron, Farron, Dan and Suzanne De Niro, Mary Ann and Bill Clark, Katie and Glenn Bruning. Glenn's out in the audience, that's why you may have seen me look out there to make sure I pronounce that name right. These families donated the initial deposit and almost and almost most of the total cash collected. In addition, based on the information provided by the Queensbury Land Conservancy, because the Queensbury Land Conservancy offered, accepted to be the receiver of donated monies. And so the following neighbors from Leland Estates and Bonner Drive and elsewhere made cash contributions. Kimberly and Rich Bennett, Carol Brown, Deborah and Mark Collier, Susan Hafner Green, George Langford, Philip and Bonnie Nadick. We also received a donation from Sandra and David Geisinger of Albany County in memory of our friend John Davis. And um, we reached out to our neighbors and friends and submitted the grant application under the project name Friends of Rush Pond Preserve. The Open Space Institute encouraged this and encouraged us to collaborate with the Queensbury Land Conservancy. Of course, we are also very grateful to Leon Steves and the entire Land Conservancy and Katie Petronas, Charlie Burgess, and Kevin Webb at the Open Space Institute and the Open Space Institute for the Grant Award, which I'll get to. It's been very rewarding and a great pleasure to work closely and collaboratively with you, our neighbors, the uh, Queensbury Land Conservancy and the Open Space Institute on this worthwhile project. We believe these 78 acres are a great addition to the Rush Pond Preserved Lands, or we're calling the Rush Pond Park now, and to our entire community. Thanks again for getting this project completed. Well, Glenn, and to thank the Freiburger family for their um, involvement and uh, agreement to go forward with this. But Glenn, none of this would have happened without your leadership. All right, so thank you. So um, there are three properties involved. And their original assessment was for 167200 uh, Glenn had negotiated with Freiburgers to purchase these three parcels for 150000 Okay, that's buying it for $1,935.50 an acre. 
So 5,000 was put up to secure this for six months and then, and, you know, as things are, they needed to put up another 2,000 for an additional six months. We had to agree to create a park, which we did. The town board did that. And uh, so the OSI, the Open Space Institute, donated $50,000 towards this purchase of, like I said, 78 acres. And the gifts and donations came in for a total of $25,550 of people and their cash to do this. So the town agreed if we come up with the rest, the remaining of $75,673.20, which came to a total with all the, uh, we had to pay the taxes for the year, even though it'll be tax free thereon and some other expenses, it came to a total of $151,223.20. And again, the town's contribution was $75,673.20. So that's, you know, that's, the town bought this basically with the people's money for less than a thousand an acre. And the town of Queensbury, mm, pretty good. Anyhow, um, this is a resolution uh, reaffirming regarding the purchase from Private River Trust and acceptance of the donations and grant funds related to the Rush Pond Expansion Park. And again, I want to thank this board, and I want to thank Clan, and I want to thank the residents and the OSI and the Queensbury Land Conservancy. It wouldn't have happened if you know this didn't become a community event. But it did, and uh, as a result, it happened. So now, the last approval from this board is before this board tonight. Okay, resolution 314. It's a resolution to amend 2018 budget. All right, just shifting a few bucks here to a few bucks there, or it's needed, the everyday thing. 315. Resolution authorizing an agreement between the Town of Queensbury and Lake George Land Conservancy, Inc. for property purchase and conservation easement in connection with French Mountain Preserve. Uh, yeah, I said to the town board, we got two very good things before us tonight. And again, thank the town board for their support. So this is the second one. This is uh, what I'm calling French Mountain Park. I don't know what Jamie and the rest are going to call it. Uh, a little over a year ago, um, a Lake George Town Supervisor, uh, Dennis Dickinson, came to me and he said, listen, I might need your help. So coming from Dennis, I didn't know if I was in trouble or not, but it turned out to be a good thing. And he explained it, and he, and, and he said, you know, the... Uh, there's land owned by a family in McPhillips on French Mountain. And I think we could purchase it. And I think the Lake George Land Conservancy is going to help us. I said, okay, well, thinking is good. Let's let's see if you know what we can do here. So uh, Dennis had talked to Jamie, got Jamie involved. This is a rough map. I, I tried to come up with a better map. Jamie, I think we have a better map showing the properties involved, and I'll share that with Joel through email, I guess. And uh, let's see the map. So, okay, so Dennis negotiated with McPhillips family, came up with a price that was pretty satisfactory considering what we're talking about here. And the asking price was 525000 Now, the Lake Shores Land Conservancy has agreed to carry most of this boat. But they needed a little help from the town of Lake George and the town of Queensbury because the lower half of this, which is off of Bloody Pond Road, is in the town of Lake George. The upper half is in the town of Queensbury. 
and it runs and connects to the top of the world. And it has some beautiful views. And if it was developed, it would only add to the deterioration. So every time you get human beings developing in the southern basin, it adds to the deterioration of the water quality in the southern basin. This will do just the reverse. This will prevent that from happening. We will use it for public passive recreation only because it's a land conservancy's dictum that both the town of Lake George and the town of Greensbury have agreed to. So we have to put in 67,000 apiece. So the town of Lake George is putting in 67 and the town of Queensbury is put in 67. But as part of the agreement, we also have to put in 10,000 to the Lake George Land Conservancy to administer and conserve this property moving forward. <coughs> so uh, we agreed to do that. And so this is the final decree, the final agreement. So the Lake George Land Conservancy will purchase this 318 acres from French Mountain Forest LLC for the purchase price of 525,000. Immediately after the Lake George Land Conservancy purchased the 318 plus or minus acres from French Mountain Forest LLC, Queensbury will purchase from the Lake George Land Conservancy, the lands in the town of Queensbury, currently tax map number 265-1-28. Queensbury will pay $67,000 to the Lake George Land Conservancy, and as I said, another ten for conserving the property. And that Queensbury agrees that the 318 plus or minus acres of lands will be used solely for passive recreation by the public so, like I said, there's beautiful hiking trails, beautiful mountain biking opportunities, beautiful views of the southern basin of Lake George, and uh, this is to go ahead with that, that deal. And Jamie Brown, who is the executive director of the Lake George Land Conservancy, is out in the audience. <coughs> Thank you, Jamie, for everything that you've done to secure, to secure this and for everything else that you've done. The list is way too long, but I'd like to thank you and the Lake George Land Conservancy for helping to keep Lake George water quality better than it would have been. And we'll work on making it better. Okay. Resolution 316. Resolution authorizing the engagement of CT Nail Associates to provide professional architectural services related to preliminary design phase of the highway garage project. All right, this is for an amount not to exceed $11,600. We are, we need a new highway building to safely and efficiently store our town fleet. We have 20 and we're going to need about 22 vehicles, and these are the huge tandems that you see. They have to be ready to go on a snowfall. They have to be housed. They have to be contained. And if you would like to see what they're housed and contained in now, you would be embarrassed by that. All right. It's time for a new building. Where on the site do we need a new building? It's time for a, um, a resurrected salt farm. It's time to maybe take a look at the layout of things and decide where we're going to put a new building. One of the ideas now is we'll take down the old building and completely rebuild the highway garage that would accommodate the, um, <coughs> the repairs and the storage of these vehicles. We might even um, need to build another building for full storage for other equipment that is currently sitting outside being exposed to the elements and rusting. This would be probably an open-sided pole barn just to keep the rain and the snow off this other additional equipment. It'd be cold storage. We also need to do some stormwater management practices back there. And so this will do the preliminary site layout. It'll do the preliminary building design and it will do the site development assessment. Again, for $11,600 to CT mail. Associates. 
Resolution 317. Resolution approving the audits of audits of bills for um, August 31st and September 11th, 2018. Okay, with payment dates of August 31st and September 11th, totaling uh, $341,027.24 and $907,197.21 respectively. Um, resolution 318. Resolution authorizing advertising of bids for construction of traffic signal at the intersection of aviation and cottage hill roads. All right, well, as you know, this is phase two of a three phase plan. We've heard the complaints about the traffic flow, especially the AM and PM peaks by the school, especially the AM peak, for a long time. And so we addressed it but it sometimes takes a long time to address. We knew we needed a new signal, but there's no sense of putting a new signalization system at the current entry to the school, which is opposite the church. Uh, and it's not going to work as we put in phase two. Phase two is, along with the school, we work with the traffic engineers, theirs and ours, to develop a comprehensive system in front of the school that will work. The traffic experts say, you will be happy with this. Currently, the intersection, as it was, was an F rating. So your traffic flows are rated A, B, C, D, E, F. Now you can imagine A, that's good. It's operating as it should, freely, functionally, very little stoppage, very little hold up. And F is, you know, all the bad things. Well, it was experiencing an F in the AM levels. We all know that. Anybody that's been to the school, as a matter of fact, you probably learned to avoid the school in the morning. You went everywhere but in front of the school in the morning. Traffic was lined up back to the roundabout. Traffic was lined up back down the hill. And <clears throat> All right. So we sat down with the school. We needed another entrance for the western cars to use because there are conflicts with the western bound and the eastern bound cars with the intention of making the school as their destination point. So many conflicts that was also holding everything out. So we put a new entryway in and we're going to put a new signal there. Now this was supposed to be two years down the road. And then the school called me up beginning of the summer and said, we're going to do it this summer. And I said, Listen, you know we can't move that fast, and with the tariffs and everything, getting steel poles has been quite a chore. It took us six months to get a steel pole for the new traffic light on Bay Road. Um, all right, so they understand. So uh, recently, August 29th, George was with me. We sat down with... Um, uh, Barton and Judas, Dan Mark, and with school officials, uh, Doug Huntley and Rob Chapman, and um, we said, okay, well, here's the schedule, here's what we're looking at. It may be March before we get the set signal in, just because we're probably going to be a four month delay on, on the poll. So, uh, all right, so we designed the new intersection and we designed it with a pole that you know it's like some of the others it pulls over because on the other side we were getting into private property issues and things like that now we do need the sidewalk over there but, um, and we're going to have to coordinate and this is going to be both intersections are pedestrian friendly and push buttons and everything else as they should be in front of schools so um, all right. Well, anyways, George was saying to me, "Geez, John, we need to sit down and and talk to the school and make sure that that intersection, which isn't going to be functional until maybe next March, is functional and safe." So we called a meeting with the school, and like I said, and we met on the 29th, and we worked. They basically had pre-worked out a program, knowing what the meeting was about. So I'd like to share this. Uh, from Doug Huntley, he's the superintendent of schools for Queensbury Union Free School District. Traffic flow on Aviation Road this morning, oh, you came prepared, was very smooth and efficient. Now, this is dated Thursday, September 6th. 
There were no backup congestion. This afternoon was a mirror image of this morning, smooth. All the other schools experienced the same great results in school opening and dismissal. And we'll see what happens tomorrow and into the future. I'm very optimistic that it will stay this way. This was the smoothest school opening for traffic since I've been here. <coughs> so the new entry bay is serving a function already, even though it's not signalized. And as George came prepared and gave me uh, the school's plan of what they're going to do until we get the signals up, it seems to be working. It seems to be working safely. So uh, accolades to the school for uh, being proactive and planning that out. Of course, they always are when you have young people in mind. So that's resolution 318, and folks, that's the last of the resolution. So uh, I'll first see if the board wants comments, and then I'll ask the public if they want comments. Any thoughts or comments from the board before we open it to the public? No. Okay. To the public, anybody like to respond to or uh, talk to uh, any of the resolutions before the town board tonight? Yes. Yeah, Supervisor, thank you. Plan, would you come up just so that it. Uh, Joel, thank you, Supervisor, members of the town board. I, I, I'm Bruni. My name is Glenn Bruni. I, I was involved. My neighbor, John Farron, is uh, with me tonight. He's been here at the other meetings. And we, we came to say thank you, uh, not just for uh, your vision uh, for uh, Rush Pond and the, both environmental protection and the community protection it provides but also to your uh, long-term vision of importance of open space protection in our community, uh, as in all communities uh, where there's a developmental pressure in all sorts of places. Uh, it's one of the things that makes our community a really lovely place to live, uh, work, and play. So we really appreciate uh, all your efforts in, in that area. Um, I, I wanted to come uh, on behalf of my neighbors and friends that were involved in the Rush Pond work and, and to thank you for uh, the project. I don't want to go on too more, much because John read the email that I had sent. It's been a pleasure working with you all. Thank you for putting up with us at the workshops and I thank council for all of your help. It, it's been a, a great a great honor to work with you all and um, thank you for all the all the, uh, the benefits that you're, you're giving to our immediate uh, community and to Queensbury at, at, in a larger sense. Well, thanks thank again. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Supervisor Stroud, the report. Uh, Jimmy Brown, the Lake George Land Conservancy. Uh, I echo what uh, Mr. Fruity, I think. Uh, you, this group is really forward thinking and um, thank you for your support with the French Mountain Project, with all these projects. Um, you really are, um, have the thoughts of your of your citizens in mind and you know, the greater good of Lake George, the, the town, the whole region. So thank you for your help with our project, with that project, OSI and everything. I mean, you're really doing some great work here and thank you for your forward thinking, just like you said. And, uh, but we appreciate your help. Um, to Professor Rao, thanks for helping, you know, being part of this. And you said for us, a lot of the work that we do, thank you for a lot of the work that you've done with us in the past, and we really appreciate everything that you've done and, and this board has done, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yes, and uh, thank you, Town Council Bob Pastor. You helped us through both these projects. Uh, okay. Any thoughts from the BF the Town Board? Um, we polled 3-9. Is there anybody else that would like to have a roll call vote on any of these? All right, hearing none. Uh, anybody want to move 3-1 through 3-18 minus 3-9? Move those forward. So move. All right, I move by uh, Councilman Perron. Second. Seconded by Councilwoman Switzer. Roll call vote on the 17 resolutions. Council Person Stroud. Yes. Madabir? Yes. Atherton? Yes. Barron? Yes. And Switzer? Yes. All right. Great. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. East Glen. I didn't know a year ago we'd be here. Jamie, I wasn't sure. Dennis would work his magic. But between you and he, you did. Thank you. Um, okay. Any correspondence? Uh, yes. Rose? I do. I have the community development report for August on file in the town clerk's office. Okay. That's it. All right. Town board discussions. Let's start with you, Tony. No, no, public comments. Public comments. Oh, public comments. Yeah, I'm sorry. Public comments. Does the public want to speak about any? I'm just taken away by what happened in French Mountain and Rush Park. <laughs> Any member of the public wish to speak to the board about any town topic may do so now. Please indicate your interest in doing so. All right, that does that. And thank you for helping me to remember that. Now on to town board's discussions. So let's start with Tony. I probably should have brought it up before, but I will say now that these two projects, I honestly didn't think they'd ever get here. I'm so excited for the future of, of the projects and Queensbury being in the recreation industry. It's amazing how many people come to this area to recreate. Um, we had a tremendously successful triathlon uh, over Labor Day. And while I would love to see the date move to next weekend, because there's nothing going on next weekend, um, in the future, it's still it's amazing to see the, the quality of the athletes. I'm reading a, a thing that was sent to us from uh, the Recreation Department about the Trinity Gurney and how successful that um, event was. Um, the quality of our mountain biking trials at Gurney Lane, um, the, the people that comment on it and come here for them. It's just really exciting times for us. And, um, you know, with all the bad, I guess, that we hear about, this is such great stuff that has been accomplished by, you know, folks like yourselves who come to us. And I look at the Dunnels Bay water quality people and Assembly Point, just people that want to make the community a better place. And I'm just, just totally blown away by it that. There's so many great people out there that just want the quality of life that they know we have here and want to continue that. So I'm so excited. I cannot wait to ride French Mountain someday. I just can't wait. It just I'm almost crawling out of my skin. And I'm a road biker, but to be able to put my mountain bike on a car and head up there is going to be just so exciting. Um, it's just great, great great things that we've accomplished and it's not us it's, it's you guys so thank you so much for everything you've done um you know it's it's really great stuff and i i was nervous i really was i thought we're never going to be able to get this done but um the fact that it's only positive and no negative is, is pretty exciting i thought for sure we'd have some people out here tonight arguing with us but i think they see the, the the good in all this. Um, another tremendous uh, bike rental season is kind of behind us except for some weekends. And again, I can't stress enough how people come to this area from New York City and Long Island and um, New Jersey. and just can't say enough wonderful things about how nice our area is. And uh, they love the bike trail. I love the bike trail. I ride it as much as I possibly can. The board and the bike trail too. And um, just if, if you don't embrace it, you should, because we're lucky to have the things that we do around here. Um, big huge shout out to our once again our highway department. Dave Newell uh, had a few complaints on potholes, and I text Dave now and just ask him if he can get out to fix some of the potholes that we have in town and I got a text back from uh, a constituent who was amazed that by 11 o'clock on the same day that she complained to me the pothole was fixed so um, you know he's doing a phenomenal job for us and I had the pleasure of talking to some of the guys working in our neighborhood and we're not 
special, but our roads are real mess, and they were there for most of the morning fixing holes, and um, you know they're just doing a great job. So a big shout out to him. And once again, I will put a bug in the air of somebody that if you could change the triathlon date to the weekend between the car show and the balloon fest, get a, away from Labor Day because uh, we, we have enough people in here for Labor Day. I think it would be great. I'm a huge supporter of athletic events that bring people to town and uh, if you could just spread it out a little bit. That would be great. I know there were some traffic issues, um, especially on 149 when the racers were plugging away. So uh, I was in the thick of it in my car. It was late for work. So uh, maybe we can talk to the, the folks at the uh, triathlon and see about changing the date. Yeah. It was still an unbelievable event. And I love, I would never do it, but um, just, you know, last year I, I made a huge mistake. I rode up to the lake to watch it. I was riding back and I was in between a bunch of racers and I quit at Glen Lake Road and, and the police that was directing traffic said, come on buddy, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> I, 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 I have absolutely done it going on. But these, these some really world class athletes that come here for that. So yeah. I'm not one of them, that's for sure. But uh, just I, I am so excited about today. I just can't tell you. I mean, really, it's been a great, great night. Yes, good stuff. All right, Tony, thank you. Catherine? And just to add to Tony's um, excitement about French Mountain and Rush Pond, it's wonderful. It really is just terrific, and a lot of hard work I know went into it in a long time, but it's going to be wonderful. I walked on the Rush Pond. Supervisor Strau, and that was great. I'm looking forward. We have a to walk to walk French Mountain now. I have to do that. Oh. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. We have to call. Now we got it. Oh, they call me. We got to call you. Can we do it on a Monday night? Instead of. Oh no, yeah. that's a problem. We'll have to get Mark. Is that a portable camera? <laughs> that would be good. It would. Uh, so yes, that's that's terrific. I also have a, a question from the from the board. All these great maps that are printed for us, right? Like for public hearings and stuff, we sort of toss them away and then we get them again. Can we all just keep them from the when the public hearing is so we have them I, instead I of throwing them away? I keep you know, yeah. so that they don't print them again. Yeah. Who prints them for us? Well, we print them. Well, sometimes the applicant prints them out. Yeah. Sometimes we we'll copy them for the board. Okay, if we cannot print them, we already have them here. Unless yep. there's a change. Yeah, we, it's just like a waste. Okay. You, you'll get a resolution that's <laughs> updated, but yeah. you have to keep them. Okay. Because they, we don't print them again. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. And someday maybe we'll have some. Uh, some tablets yes, and we shouldn't all be on tablets. Paper, it's just, it's well, we're going to let the planning board and the zoning board experiment with us. We're, <laughs> we're adopting, we, first of all, we have to adopt the policy and how to use this okay. IT equipment. We're very close to the final uh, writing of that, right, Jennifer? Because she is working on that. And uh, so we should have the wording and before the board, and we'll have uh, the policy on you know, what you can and can't do with this public <laughs> instrument. And maybe the town board will follow. And we'll go paperless. Definitely. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I have just two things. One is, um, I know I've heard about, I hope, or if you haven't, there's a Southern Adirondack for Solar campaign that's going on, and it's organized by the uh, Southern Adirondack for Solar uh, <clears throat> group. And there is another, and it's um, sponsored by the Town of Queensbury Clean Energy Community, and includes eight other Warren County um, municipalities, um, and it's offering discounted solar for local residents and businesses. And we've been holding um, events over the last three months about, and there is another event, an informational event, this Saturday, 
um, from 9.30 to 11.30 at the Queensbury Hotel. Um, it's an informational event. Uh, if you've at all been thinking about solar for your home or you just want information, this is a really good opportunity to come. Um, discounts, it, it's a program that offers discounts as part of the campaign. Um, and there's the um, SAS, which is Southern Aeronautic Solar Campaign. Um, has, uh, we have two solar installers, which is Apex and Solar Liberty, and they will be there. And there will also be some homeowners who can speak to their experience with uh, putting up solar. And there will be free food and drink. Other events are scheduled. Um, the next two after that, there will be one at the Lake George Brew House. Um, at 1043 Route 9 on September 20th, uh, which is a Thursday from 5 to 7 p.m. Um, the other one is Main Street Ice Cream Parlor in Chestertown on Main Street, yeah, 6339 Main Street, which is September 25th from 5 to 7. And there will be two or three more in October, which we will announce. Uh, the sign-ups for this, and you have to sign up to have uh, Apex or Solar Liberty come and uh, assess your home and that has to be done by October 31st and contracts have to be signed by November 15th. So this is just a great opportunity if you're even, if you just even have questions, come and ask your questions, get information. Okay, that's this Saturday um, at the Queensbury Hotel from 9.30 to 11.30. And also there's a um, SUNY Adirondack Library at, and the College of Sustainability Committee are sponsoring for the fall. They're sponsoring an environmental sustainability film series. Uh, they'll be shown in the Miller Auditorium in Deer Love Hall. And there's the first one is September 18th, and it's uh, the Inconvenient Sequel, which is out the sequel to Al Gore's Inconvenience. Um, and it's Al Gore's mission to change the hearts and minds of world leaders regarding climate change. So that sounds really, really good. That's it. Okay, thank you, Captain. George. Yes. Well, you know, I, I wanted to just dovetail on uh, the conversation that uh, Councilman Medivere said. I, I also had a very positive experience with our new hyper, highway superintendent, uh, David Dilton, very responsive. I had two or three items as well. That we were quickly dealt with, so that's appreciated. I know the, the folks who, who write the emails and ask for, for work to be done are appreciate that too. The other thing I just wanted to mention we all kind of jumped on this the French Mountain and the Rush Pond thing. And I know over the years when I would watch this on television, there have been times where people have come and complained about uh, Queenberry becoming overgrown, you know, that we're growing too big. And, and you, too much business, too much, too much uh, development, and I think that the board should be very proud of the fact that I, I think there's a good balance of both. Now, here are two examples of where we went out and with land conservancy and working with people in, in the town, you know, protecting lands that are in in the town. But at the same time, we are very supportive of uh, economic development where we have those businesses. That come in, we help them get established here as well. So, I think we have a good balance here. If I might interrupt, uh, Bobby Java Harley, who developed the uh, Hilton Home Two Suites, the 19. his attorney came up to me at the ribbon cutting and said he's worked with a lot of towns on a lot of developments. And he said, Queensbury is one of the absolutely best towns to work with. And I said, well, that's great to hear. We've got a great department, we're very helpful, and, uh, and um, went along with what you said. You know, there's a balance. Yeah. And, and you know, I bring some of uh, previous experience being on the planning board, having gone through all of those site plan reviews and, that, and various businesses. Yes. So, and then we support our support of that as well. Right. Good. Anything else you want? That's it. All right, thank you. Jennifer? Um, the other thing I want to mention it kind of goes along with your discussion over the school and the school light is that school's back in session and there's school buses out there and there are young children out there. 
Um, and I know myself, I have already seen a couple of um, situations that weren't probably the safest. And this is just like, three days into the school year. So just a reminder to everybody to slow down or leave a little bit earlier in the morning so that you can get to where you need without jeopardizing our children getting on and off the buses. And that's all I have to add. Oh. All right. I have a folder, guys. I saw that. That can't be good. No start clock. But we've had so much to celebrate already tonight, John. 758. All right. So some of it I'll save for the next meeting. But I, I certainly um, want to give accolades, accolades uh, to. Um, you know, SUNY Adirondack and the Workforce Development Building and the NSTEM Building, Nursing, Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math, and the fact that, you know, we're going to orient more of our college to workforce development and what goes on in this area, talking about the economics. We all claim that we want the good jobs. We want the jobs that pay well, that can bring our families up, and their can't, our kids don't have to move to Boston or New York City to earn a decent living to raise their families here. We want them to raise them here because we want to take care of the grandkids and everything else. It's all nice having them locally, but you got to have the jobs. And, and, and so under Christy, uh, President Dr. Duffy's uh, tutelage, we've uh, we've gone far and uh, we're continuing to go far, and so I thought I'd mention that. And then again in the Postar, Postar front pages, Kathy Bazzoni. That's a great picture. And Kathy Bazzoni, we've hired her, the town board here hired her to be our environmental consultant and to help us with environmental affairs. And, uh, and so the Postar, um, the one where she's doing is swimming, looking and taking pictures of algae around the shorelines of Lake George. Algae growth uh, is fairly commonplace, but some types of algae indicates uh, that things aren't okay. Storm water, septic pollution, and so forth can be affecting the water quality. Algae can tell us this. So, and it also talks about this town board's property transfer law, and we um, we are progressing that. We, we listen to the public. We have two informational hearings. We listen to the public. We're going to take a look at it at a Monday night at a workshop and see if it needs fine tuning. We'll fine tune it, and then that will be the version that we present to the public for a public hearing. So, on the 24th, which is our next meeting, we got lots of public hearings. We're going to set another public hearing, uh, probably for October 15th for the property transfer law. And again, that is your septic system needs to be inspected. We can force you to inspect it if you're going to transfer your property ownership. It needs to be inspected to show that it's functional. And as I uh, said to uh, another Postar reporter, um, you know, your rule, you get that inspected. And if that's failing, that only affects that property. But if your septic system's failing, that's affecting water quality and a lot of people's property. All right. John, before you move on, the Postar article with Kathy Bizzoni. Yes. If you read the electronic version, they had extra pictures in our own. Catherine Atherton was out there too. As well. that's right. Oh, that's right. But from the back. It's <laughs> from the back. That couldn't be. Yeah, so thank you, Catherine, for helping out with that uh, algae search. Right. It was very interesting. Yeah. 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 Well, there shouldn't like be any good. algae blooms, from what I understand. There should not be any algae blooms in Lake George. Algae, yes, but not algae blooms. Well, we're hoping to resolve that. The Jefferson Project said that there are that's algae That's a great blooms. project, though. It hasn't surfaced, but you know, if we can control the water quality or improve the water quality, we may never change. see them. You're right. Uh, that I can skip and deal with another time. That one, too. That one I can skip. Oh! Uh, guess what I found? We're afraid to ask. <laughs> 
The comprehensive sewer studies for Lake George. Originally, if you remember, this is August 1975. In engineering consulting, this is the executive version of it. Summary of the comprehensive sewage study for the Lake George Upper Hudson region. I don't even think Rose was born then. The, <laughs> was, that your, was that in your front seat of your car, John? No, no. Uh, that was sitting over in Chris Harrington's office. Wow. Oh my goodness. And he said, you might want to see this because the plan was to sewer all the southern basin of Lake George from Pilot Knob all the way around, including boat landing, including Glen Lake. That's right. I remember the bumper stickers. No sewer, no sewer tax. I know, but you look back and, whoa, wouldn't that have solved yeah, so many of our absolutely. problems? Absolutely. There it is, folks. Uh, okay, other good stuff. This is a letter to Dave Hatton from Marilyn Reba. I'm writing to let you know how much I appreciate your quick action pertaining to my complaint about the foreclosed uh, property listed above. Your letter to the bank, uh, that the bank owns the property, very much appreciated. It succinctly put them on notice in the New York State Property Maintenance Code, which was adapted by the town board and will be enforced. I was contacted by neighbors today to let them know about the complaint and the town's response. Many thanks to the town board that works hard to make sure Queensbury continues to remain a home of natural beauty, a good place to live. That kind of goes along with the whole theme tonight. It does, yes. Yeah. Uh, another letter from Robin Vernava, V-E-R-N-A-V-A, Vernava. We want to update you on the positive outlay, outlay of the town's occupancy tax given to all about Pickleball. The $1,200 was well spent to help defray the cost of our website design. A direct result was the overwhelming participants who were from out of town. We had players from Albany, Orange County, Plattsburgh, Indian Lake, Gloversville, Colony, California, Vermont, this website allowed us to market this event to not just town residents, but anyone who might play pickleball. We were delighted to spend consecutive nights celebrating our daily pickleball experience at Me, Max, and Glens Falls, and understand some of our participants stayed at the Queensbury Hotel. Well, at least it's named Queensbury. Again, thank you uh, from all the participants uh, for this experience and this wonderful town. Well, that was nice, huh? Mm -hmm. Why did I pull this? Well, I pulled it for some. All right, I'll save it for next time. I'll find the article rather than waste time. Uh, okay. And then, uh, okay. So, last but not least, it's been a long time, folks. <laughs> what do you mean? It's seven after eight. It was eight o'clock when I started going. This is a record breaker. All right, now do this real fast. <laughs> All right, following our last town board meeting, this is my supervisor's report to town board and community. The Lake George Asian Clam Survey I did with Dave Wick and others August 21st, Tuesday, and we went up the east side of Lake George, all the way up in Ticonderoga, came down by uh, Rogers Rock and that side, uh, found a few Asian clams where we expected to find them. That was okay. <laughs> But even better, there was no Asian clams where we didn't expect to find them. Although in the southern, uh, where was it, the, in the midsection, was it, Jamie, they found some Asian clams where they didn't expect to find them? He broke. Yes. So anyhow, that's fun. But you know, Lake George is just so beautiful. I mean, the, look at the head of the lake and looking north. Going along the shoreline, 
up in the islands. I mean, that's why it's called the King of American Lakes, right? Chairman mm -hmm. of the Irondas. He's being a wise guy. I'm being a wise guy. Queen. Queen. Yeah, like Queen Victoria. All right. Um, and the Chapman Museum. And uh, the Chapman Museum wants me to give another guided tour of the military road, or what we call the Great Cary War Path. So I'll be giving another guided tour, telling about the mostly French and Indian history of our region, which we are really rich in that history, on uh, October 13th. So it's a fundraiser for them. I'm not making anything out of it. This is about the fifth time I've given the tour. I don't mind giving it, and especially for fundraisers for a great organization like the Chapman Museum. Anyhow, call them if you're interested, October 13th. And there's only going to be one trolley bus, and I think that's limited to like 25 people. First come, first serve. You want to hear John Stroud's narration of the Great War Path. Uh, next day, Wednesday, October, August 22nd. Um, that's when we met with the site plan, the highway department, and Barton and Judas and everything else to talk about the proposed highway garage salt farm. Mm -hmm. Later that day, I met with Carol Collin and Lorraine Ruffing to discuss some of the Lake George Park Commission's new stormwater regulations and that I would speak to uh, advocating for a larger buffer because they're only asking for a 35-foot buffer and I think the minimum should be a 50-foot buffer. And I had a study showing the greater the buffer, the more the protection. And I thought we were here because the 35 was is, is the absolute minimum. And I thought the Lake George Park Commission should do better than that. I don't know if they are. I hope they are. I, I understand. I had to leave because I had another meeting after that. I understand Carol Collins and Rain Ruffing said that others spoke to that issue at that meeting too. Then that night we had a town board uh, workshop. Uh, well, no, that was late that afternoon, where the, we had a presentation of the financial statements by our auditor, and the town board had to ask questions, and the town of Queensbury is in very good shape, as it should be, if this town board is doing what they should be, and they are. So we're very healthy, and we plan to keep this town healthy. Thursday, August 23rd, I met with Scott Sopcik in the uh, Greater Glens Falls uh, Transit Advisory Committee where we talked about transit and the buses and the bus system. Um, then George Rowan and I met with department managers to discuss some issues, and then I had a SUNY uh, Board of Trustees meeting. SUNY Adirondack Board of Trustees, I'm on that board. Then Friday, Okay, I probably should announce this. I played hooky and went to the Washington County Fair. I looked at the uh, cows and goats and chickens and rabbits and stuff with my grandson. And we rode the rides. <laughs> August 25th, Saturday, I had the Cornell Cooperative Extension Fundraiser. And I believe Father George was at that too. Yes. Uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension, a great organization. And they have a greenhouse ribbon cutting coming up, don't they? Mm -hmm. Yes. August 26th, Sunday. I went to Women's Equality Day rally and the parade, and I was the judge of the posters. Now, Mayor Hall was supposed to join me, but Mayor Hall was uh, caught on road and wasn't able to make it. So I was the only judge of the best posters, and they really did have some great posters. So it was a tough job. And then we had a quality day brunch at the Queensbury Hotel. And then that night, <laughs> I went to Hudson Headwaters annual community uh, champion celebration at Point of Pines in Brant Bay. And Hudson Headwaters uh, recognized some of the community champions. On August 27th, Monday, I had an environmental concerns committee, a facilities committee, and then George and Crone and I met with some department managers to discuss some issues. August 28th, Tuesday, uh, did, met with Building and Ground to discuss their budget, met with Highway to discuss their budget, met with Tom Clerk to discuss their budget, those uh, court discussed their budget. Wednesday, Building and Co's budget, Water and Sewer budget, Planning and Zoning budget, and you must know that it's uh, budget time, huh? 
Then George joined me and we had the Aviation Road meeting with the school that I talked about earlier. And uh, that evening, going into the evening, I should say, I uh, had a Warren County Safety and Quality Bicycle Organization meeting. I'm the vice chair of that, Lloyd Mott's the chair. August 30th on Thursday, uh, we did the Rush Pond Park and Fry River Properties Closings uh, Finance Committee, Park and Rec Budget. Friday 31st uh, was move-in day at SUNY Adirondack. I helped out with that, and uh, then my family friend, Bob Tissinger, went to his wake and had most of his kids, his students. Nice guy. A bicycler, too. He could fix anything. He would be the guy that your bikes don't. <laughs> September 1st, Saturday, we had the Rockhurst Informational Meeting, and Tony and I uh, were at that one, and uh, did anybody else go? Yeah. It was quite well attended, and we talked about the community with Rockhurst, they're trying to put together a community septic system. Now here is another thing that has been inspired by the residents. Steve C. Boyer and Tom Sargent, you know, are taking a leadership role in this. They would like to take the 52 units that are on that peninsula called Rockers that we would never allow development like that today, George. Um, but it is what it is. And they all have their own individual septic systems. Wouldn't it be nice to put a community system in? That's what we're working on. And then, after that, just to let you know, it's part of my research work as you know, what's good for Queensbury. I went to the Garlic Festival in Benning. <laughs> now, we should have a Garlic Festival here. So people generally don't know. This thing is huge! I don't know if you've ever been at a Garlic Festival in Bennington, but somebody ought to start one here in Queensbury. I started doing some of my homework, say. Yeah, okay. Uh, Sunday, September 2nd, I came in and worked here. On uh, September 4th, Tuesday, I met with Bob Hafner, Dave Duell, Mark Benware. Uh, we discussed a variety of things, the uh, Tom things. Uh, then uh, we met with Jack McConaughey, and uh, we're trying to develop the most up to date sexual harassment policy that we can. New York State is expecting uh, this town and uh, other municipalities around New York State to adopt new standards, a new policy, a new program, new training for sexual harassment. And um, so I've used that experience to write up the sexual harassment policy for the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board because we're redoing all their paperwork right now and getting their back, them back up on their feet. Uh, September 5th, uh, Wednesday, I've been, I've been asked to be a panelist at the climate conference that's coming up and uh, talk about, you know, what challenges do municipalities have in addressing climate change. I mean, we're familiar with the culverts that have gotten washed out and we put in bigger and better culverts. And now we're being proactive, and we're, we're seeing culverts, especially uh, up on Buck B Road, that, listen, if we don't pay attention to it, it's going to be the next one washed out. And that's, you know, Butler Brook is right there, and that's what feeds part of uh, Glen Falls' water system. So, you know, we got to be special tuned to our infrastructure. We're getting these heavy rains. Uh, what, for example, last July 1st, we got four inches in just a matter of a couple of hours, and we got pounded. And so um, we need to get prepared for those kind of things, and that's what I'm going to be one of the pilot panelists speaking about how municipalities are trying to deal with uh, climate warming. All right, September 6th, Thursday, uh, we're putting in a new security system here in the town, that building over there, and so we hired U.S. Security. They were the uh, best bidder, and their representative, Tom Roche, was here, and we worked out some of the details. And then I had a, uh, a cookout to go to, but it was working cookout, okay? Up to Jeff Colleen, he's the best chef in the world. 
Anyhow, it was all the Lake George people. We had the Jefferson Project that went for Lake George. We had, uh, I think, representatives from Lake George Land Conservancy went for Lake George. Lake George Association, Lake George Park Commission, then the little Dan Stack were there. Um, and so this was all, you know, and we discussed work too, besides eating good steak. Uh, September 7th, I'm telling you, this job takes you out of the office. You gotta work hard in other places, you know. I'm just telling you. September 7th, Friday, joint uh, committee meeting uh, with uh, Washington County folks to review and approve some of the Adirondacks capital expenditure proposals. Uh, then we met, I met with CT Mouse Joe Highland. Uh, and then I met with Craig Brown to discuss uh, Saratoga Hospital and the Exit 18 development. And they would like to buy some town property there. And uh, so we'll work that out. And then, uh, and then today, um, I had the Lake Champlain Lake George Regional Planning Board Bylaws Committee meeting, and we're hammering out the sexual harassment and the other uh, bylaws and rules and regulations for that organization. Like I said, to get them back on their feet. And then we're at the town board meeting, and you're waiting for me to say what? One thing that I think we all look at. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Tomorrow is September 11th. Yes. Um, none of us mentioned it, and as I'm sitting here looking, realizing that, just have everybody take a moment tomorrow and reflect on what's going on, especially everything that was so positive tonight, collectively people coming together and what can be done, and kind of us remembering that. Um, that's what happened after September 11th, and maybe more of that can be spread around. Yeah. Yeah, good point. Thank you, gentlemen. Sorry. On the meeting. Uh, all right. Before we adjourn, I'd like to thank Look TV and Look TV's Jewel Barlow, our cameraman. And I'd like to thank our sponsors, especially Story Tech. And thank the public for coming. And um, thank John Thompson and Rose and uh, for coming. And Rose and Rose and Rose and Rose and my friend. All right, and so we'll go down. All right, so nothing else. We'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Moved by uh, Councilman Switzer, seconded by Second. Councilman Ath Councilwoman Atherden. All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 Ah, we're now adjourned. Thank you all. Public affairs programming on Look TV is underwritten by the generous support of Pennell's Restaurant, classic Italian-American food since 1922, and Stored Tech, technology solutions for computers, networks, and phone. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion. 1922, Babe Ruth debuts with the Yankees. WGY signs on air. Exterminator wins the Saratoga Cup, and Pennell's Restaurant opens its doors for the very first time. For five generations, Pennell's has been preparing delicious Italian food, served in a comfortable, home-like setting where everyone is welcome. 90 years of authentic Italian recipes, 90 years of the freshest ingredients, and 90 years of the finest classic Italian dishes, all made daily by hand. Pennell's Italian Restaurant, a Saratoga dining tradition since 1922. Firms deal only with prevention, the systems that block hackers and viruses. Stored Tech knows the root cause is actually good people doing bad things. So we offer a security training program which includes certifying all participants to show they understand the basics. Technology solutions for computers, networks, and phones. Stored Tech, your technology, our passion.